Welcome to Whoops in the Dungeon. Uh, we rarely do a do-over. Most of my content's done in my living room. One take, uh, straight to you. But I did a couple of videos on long cords and my cameraman, me, messed up and I had my head cut off in the whole video. And I decided I just didn't like it. So I'm gonna do a do-over and as soon as I get these videos ready to go up, I'm gonna pull the old ones down so that we have hopefully a little bit better presentation. We did two short videos on long quirts, sometimes called dog quirts, because really they're built almost like a dog signal whip, only instead of finished with a cracker, they're finished with a quirt tail uh, or a viper tongue, some people would call it. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about the build. The business end of this whip is a piece of leather, either red hide or latigo. However, it's finished, the viper tongue's finished. And that piece of leather is gonna provide a lot of bite. Uh, dog quartz either th three or four foot long. So you got a piece of leather moving at a three or four foot distance. It's gonna end up with a lot of force. So the build itself uh, doesn't have to be as sophisticated as most single tail builds. Uh, Cause you're not working with a cracker you're not working with finesse. The intent of a dog court is to provide an intense experience. And you can provide that intense experience, in my opinion, without a real sophisticated single tail build. So my recommendation is just, you don't need much more than a core, a shot bag, and then just an overlay. You might do a bolster over that shot bag uh, and then an overlay, but I don't think a, a dog court really needs a belly. That's a little bit overkill, considering the business end is this piece of leather. So the other variable <clears throat> is how the viper tongue is attached to the single tail. The most simplest example, I'm gonna walk up close so you can see it, is I simply finish this one with a fall hitch. So, it's almost like an extra wide fall that's been split in the middle to create a viper tongue. But a simple fall hitch attaches that to the single tail, or to the quirt rather. So the other style that I've seen, this one uh, examples made by Peter Jack. Uh, again, si similar lasagna for the build, shot bag, bolster, overlay, Nothing super fancy, but in this one, he, uh, he built an eye and attached it to the fall hitch. Then through that eye, he plaited or braided a piece of leather to form a viper tongue. And you'd think because of the swivel, this wouldn't be accurate, but the reality is of Newton's laws of motion when an object's in motion in a straight line, the force continues uh, that generally in a straight line unless it's acted upon by an outside force. So when I throw these two quirts, <coughs> excuse me, I'm just kind of getting over a little respiratory illness here. You use all the same four techniques that we've been teaching. Bow and arrow, over the shoulder, horizontal or the Ford figure eight. I personally like the quirt tail just simply attached with a fall hitch. I feel I have better control and better finesse. But in deference to the master whip maker, Peter Jack, uh, this design you would think would be loosey goosey, but when you actually throw it, I see no difference in accuracy in the four techniques. <clears throat> so that, that eye that kind of creates a little bit of a swivel, when the whip is actually thrown, uh, I see no difference. So it's really preference. 
This particular design is a little more, what I call tip heavy. So it's gonna deliver a little more impact. The cork that has the tongue directly attached to the fall is not as tip heavy. I feel like I have a little bit better control, a little bit better finesse. And I apologize for my breathing. I'm just getting over pneumonia. But I did want to redo that video. As always, like, subscribe, ring the bell, and leave an appropriate comment. And thank you for watching Whoops in the Dungeon.